Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 30th of April. We're going to run through Digibyte. We have seen an absolutely huge move here off the lows. 800% increase in price up to this top here. So I believe it deserves a bit of recognition. We're going to do a video on it today. On top of that, I will run through it step by step, going through the sequence in which I will approach a, a chart when I do my technical analysis. And on top of that, we will just touch on Bitcoin very briefly. It's not a Bitcoin video, and so I won't spend too much time on it. But we have seen some aggressive price action since my last Bitcoin video the other day. And so I'll just briefly touch on that also. So if interested, then stay tuned. Alright guys, hope you're all doing well. So first things first, as I say, we'll just touch on Bitcoin to begin with. So if you watched my last video, you'll note that I was looking at 7700 as a key level. Admittedly, it's come higher than I expected. But having said that, it hasn't broken any bearish parameters. Okay, I mentioned obviously my invalidation point was the 50 week simple moving average of which it's the weekly close which is significant in relation to that so ideally if it is a continuation of a bear market you want to see price beneath uh, we're currently at around 8730 on the 50 week simple moving average so you want to see price close the week beneath that if bears are in control conversely if price ends up above 8730 at the end of the week it's suggesting the bulls are in control simple as that yeah but we have hit some very significant bearish parameters. Check me out on Twitter. I've been trying to keep people up to date on Twitter. So I've put out the reasons why I maintain my bearish bias. But that said, because of this big move up, it has forced me to question what is going on here. And I have reconsidered my long term count. And so I'm briefly going to show you another tweet that I put out. And it's basically looking at a fractal from 2016. I want you just maybe just pause the video at this point and just have a look at this price action right here. There's this long term triangle, which I've been looking at this major wave four triangle previously calling 20K the top of a wave three and the subsequent price action a wave four triangle. I was put off when I saw this spike in volume on the wave C, which made me think that we're not seeing our declining volume, which is classical for a triangle. That said, I can't ignore the fact that we're absolutely following this sequence almost to the T. Okay, and here also we see a spike in volume on the C wave, which is a higher volume than on the B wave. Okay, so we get that discrepancy back in 2016 also. But just look at the sequence and it's just absolutely copying it wave for wave. So you can see in the beginning we come down, go into a bit of a descending triangle, another leg down again. First leg down, descending triangle, second leg down. Then what do we see? We see this impulse and then price seems to be unsure about where it's going next. And then we see a, an aggressive extended impulse to the upside. Again here, small impulse, sideways movement, aggressive five wave impulse to the upside. Then we get this overlapping waves coming down, a little bit of a pump in price looking like it might be heading higher. And then all of a sudden it rolls over. Looking at it back in 2016, overlapping price action looks like it's going to head up higher and then it rolls over big time then what do we see three waves up and this is where i believe we are right now three waves up this is not the end of the d wave i believe that we come down almost as low as the bottom of the c wave before pumping higher final e wave and that is the significant low prior to a very strong wave five to the upside this is the way I'm looking at it. I believe it's very exciting in the sense that it could result in some very aggressive price action. I've not completely let go of my other long term wave count, which is the major WXY, but I'll be strongly considering this, considering the fact that the way it's played out very similarly to the price action of 2016. So as I say, pause the video back to 2016, take a look, compare the two images. And um, yeah, make a decision for yourself. But I think it's very, very interesting and something that I'm strongly focusing on at this moment in time. Anyway, that will do for Bitcoin. I want to now take a look at Digibyte. So as I say, if I'm looking at a chart, 
First of all, having looked at Bitcoin, that is my benchmark. Essentially, I know that I'm looking at this long corrective move down. I like to go on the linear scale to determine the wave count, first of all, because on the log scale, the waves get distorted, especially because you obviously the, the waves look bigger than they are on the, the lower end of the picture, whilst on the top end, they get, they, they get squashed. Yeah, So it really distorts your picture, distorts your wave count. So I prefer to look at it on the linear. Yeah, Here, basically, I see what looks like you know, three three major legs coming down. So we've got our first one, second one, third one. Now, th when you see that, you can think A, B, C, W, X, Y. You can do your subwave counts, whatever. Doesn't really matter. All you because if you've got a three wave move down, it's, it's pretty corrective in nature. Yeah. Anyway, the way I'm labeling it is on the log scale now. If we just bring up the Elliott wave count, so I'm calling it this large W, X, Y. Arguably, looking at it now, there's certainly an argument for it being an ABC to the downside also. As I say, I'm not too concerned at this moment in time. ABC or WXY, I'm looking at this as the end of a correction. Now, once you've got your Elliott wave count in, you can then apply your pitchfork. Yeah. So with my pitchforks, I do my first pivot at the, at the top, second pivot at the end of the first wave, third pivot at the end of the second wave. That then allows you to project your pitchfork going forward. Now, in corrective price action, you generally want to use a pitchfork that is going to follow a shallow gradient. And this is usually your shift pitchfork, but could also be a modified shift. It can also be the original Andrews pitchfork, but it's not so common because that is usually used for impulsive price action. Essentially, the pitchfork you should use is the one that holds price the best, the one where the lines are getting held the best and you can see here on the shift pitchfork it's holding wonderfully well the median line really getting touched many times then we come down test our lower median line and then where have we found resistance up at the upper warning line okay so this pitchfork is basically telling you you can use this looking for support and resistance going forward okay um, all right now looking at this now so it looks like the completion of a WXY question is now is it the bottom how can we determine if it is the bottom well first of all we need to look at the Elliott wave count here is it impulsive or is it looking corrective in nature now if we zoom in four hourly time frame is probably the best time frame to look at this now I've got an Elliott wave count on it and this thing is with Elliott wave there's always more than one way of determining the count okay and this is why a lot of people get put off by it but the point is when you hit major support and resistance, it helps you to know the sentiment behind the chart, whether it's looking more impulsive or more corrective, because that will add to, it will give more confluence and give you a better idea of which way price is heading. So here, this is the count that I've given it. So this is a wave one. Wave two is a running flat. So it's an A, B, C coming down. This is your third, this is your fourth, and this is your fifth coming up you can see a nice five wave count one two three four five for the fifth yeah so yeah i think it looks like a very regular impulsive wave now when you get an impulse always be careful because a five wave count can always be the c wave of a bigger correction an abc flat for example will terminate in a five wave sequence for the c wave so that said going on the daily you can argue that this is all in a massive expanded flat, with this being a 3, a 3, and a 5. Yeah. Which would suggest that we've got another leg to the downside. Yeah, so how can you determine if that's likely or not? Well, one thing that really helps is if you pull on volume. So if you pull on volume, it really helps to distinguish corrective sequences from impulsive. And the fact that we've seen this move up on very high volume, to me, it's suggesting that it is impulsive and it's validating the upward move. So I would be surprised, to be honest, if we saw lower lows than this low down here. I do think this is an impulse. It looks like the termination of an impulse to the upside. And now I'm waiting for a, probably a deep correction here. So after a, we'd have to call this a major wave one. A major wave two classically will come down to the 0.618 level. When you see these exponential moves up, it's not unusual to see the 0.786 fib retracement also tested. 
So these are the kind of things that I'm looking out for here on Digibyte. Now let's just put on a few horizontal levels. How do I look for horizontal levels? So I'll go on the highest time frame first of all. So if we just go on the monthly and let's just tidy up the chart a moment. Let's take off the shift. Let's take off the WXY and let's take off the impulse. And first of all, so on the monthly, we're looking for this retracement. How far can we expect it to come down? So on the monthly, I was looking at, just need to remind myself now. Um, okay, so yeah, basically you get your series of red candles coming down in the bear trend, obviously. And then you want to look for, ideally you want to isolate the opposing color candles, which is the green candles. So if you can get one green candle within a sequence of red candles, that's ideal. Sometimes it's not always possible. Um, so it should be on the monthly. Here we go. This is So this is better, yeah? So you've got your series of red candles, isolated green candle here. So what I would do, I'd look for the body of that candle. So I've done the top of the body of this candle. And I've also looked at these green candles here. So this is, the, this is the top of the range and this is the bottom of the range. Obviously, I'm looking for where price is going to find support. So I don't think it's going to find support here. I think it's going to be a much deeper retracement. So it's these lower regions that I'm looking at. Yeah, so I'll look. This is the bottom of the monthly range. This is the top of this monthly range. Of course, you can mark the bottom of this also. Yeah, the reason I've only left these ones on is because if we pull on a Fib retracement tool, uh, let's just go back on our four hourly. Just zooming out a little bit. So four hourly. And then what we want to look at is our fib retracement. So fib retracement from top to bottom. So here's a top. Here's the bottom. Yeah. And we want to go on the linear scale. So when you're looking at fib retracements, always better on the linear scale. So what I am looking at there's two areas so there's the the 0.618 is here at uh, 0.9 cents and that is getting very close to this monthly level right here yeah so i think that's one very good target yeah but another probably it may even be a, an even better target would be this one here so this is at the 0.786 and it's giving absolutely perfect confluence with the bottom or sorry the top of that monthly um, block that we looked at yeah so these would be the two targets that i'm looking at I wouldn't just blindly put an order at either of these levels. I always wait for an impulse up off one of these levels. So that could be on the one minute time frame. It could be on the five minute time frame, 15 minute. It doesn't really matter. You can go into these really short time frames, but you want to see validation. You want to see some good volume coming in and you want to see an impulse in the opposing direction. Yeah, because otherwise this, as I say, could be just a C wave of a big expanded flat and we come down, take these lows out and come down a lot lower. Now, if you're going to start putting long positions in here blindly, long positions in here blindly, also looking for a double bottom and putting another position, you're going to wipe yourself out very, very quickly. So for that reason, always wait for confirmation. Yeah. So yeah, these are the two targets essentially that I'm looking out for on Digibyte. I'll be looking out for price coming down to these levels. I'm not interested in shorting. I'm a lot more interested in what I believe will be a lot more upside. And so I'm waiting for price to come down to these levels, wait for confirmation with an impulse on a short time frame to the upside on good volume, and then I'll be looking to go long. All right. So that would be in keeping with Bitcoin being in this um, triangular major wave four. If Bitcoin is alternatively coming down a lot lower, let's say in a large WXY down to 1300, then certainly I'd be expecting these lows to get taken out and we come down a lot lower. Yeah. So another thing just to mention that I had, had been looking at on this chart is if we go back on the log scale, uh, let's just take off these annotations a moment. So you can see another reason that we topped out here. Uh, we can see it well on the weekly time frame. Again, on the subject of these ranges that we look for. So here, You've got this range here from here to here yeah if we do a line at the bottom there yeah that's your weekly and that is exactly where we came up and tested so it's these higher time frames where we get the 
the bodies of the range. So whether it's the monthly, the weekly, even the yearly is also good. I've already looked at the yearly on this chart and there's no particularly useful lines. But on the monthly and weekly, oh, there are certainly plenty of good lines. Um, so yeah, that is how I'll basically use Elliott Wave pitchforks, horizontal levels, including volume. There are other things I include in my analysis, such as correlating charts, camera pivots, moving averages. In this analysis, these were the only things that I really required. I've already done all of those other analytical skills on Bitcoin, which is my main benchmark for crypto. But yeah, I thought I'd throw that out there. That's how I'm looking at Digibyte. As I say, I've mentioned the two targets that I've been looking out for. So that was these two levels. And it's like basically the 0.618 and the 0.786 Fib retracement, which was in keeping with these monthly levels. So I believe the lower one at 0.786 Fib retracement is at 0.6 cents and 0.9 cents approximately is where our 0.618 retracement is. So yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. But any queries, feel free to pop them in the um, in the comments down below. If you found value in today's content, please leave a like. And um, yeah, really want to say thank you to you all because I think probably I was just a couple of subscribers off 10K. So monumental moment for the channel. Um, yeah, really pleased to reach that. And um, yeah, onwards and upwards. So. Hope you've enjoyed the video guys. All right, take care.